Hello, this is part two of designing and building a tube-based headphone amplifier. Uh, if you haven't watched part one, I would recommend you go watch that first. It's been a while since part one. Uh, I was waiting for some parts, but then I just kind of not got back into it. Anyway, time for part two here. So in this part, I'll focus on the power supply design. So I have a transformer here and a couple of regulator circuits here. But before we get into those, I made a couple of minor modifications to the actual headphone uh, tube circuit here. So let's just have a look at this schematic. The first modification I made is adjusting this resistor here from 12K to 15K. And there was a bug in the previous schematic. Uh, this resistor here should be 220 ohm, and this should also be 220 ohm, but actually it was in the schematic it was set at 330 ohm but in the circuit i had it at 220 ohm so it was only an error in the schematic and then i adjusted this capacitor here it used to be 100 nanofarad now it's 220 nanofarad uh, it improves the lower the distortion at the lower frequencies and then we have the output capacitor here so it still says 100 microfarad here but I am considering maybe putting two in parallel so we get 200 microfarad. Uh, it's mostly when driving lower impedance headphones, uh, it will give a little bit less distortion uh, in the lower frequencies. So that's still a little bit to be decided, but i am probably go with the 200 microfarad here. With that out of the way, let's get back to the power supply design. This is the transformer I've chosen for the project here. And if we look at the secondary side, we can see we got three 6.3 volt secondary windings. It's capable of delivering 1.5 amp. Uh, so what we need is each side here, the heaters here will consume. This is only for one channel. So they will consume about one amp, somewhere between 900 milliamp and one amp for the heaters for these two tubes here. So I will need to use two of these secondary uh, heater windings here and for the high voltage supply we have this winding here we have a 0 220 and 250 volt uh, AC output and 100 milliamps so I'm planning to supplying the amplifier modules with somewhere around 270 volt I think so maybe the 220 volt AC winding here will work or oh, else we always have the 250 here if we need more voltage and I know each side will consume about 35 milliamps, so 100 milliamps should give us plenty of headroom. I don't think we need more than 70, maybe 80 maximum. So plenty of headroom on both the high voltage and the heater supply. So first let's have a look at the heater regulator. So you might think that, well, we can just use the standard LM317 uh, because it will easily do 1 amp and it will easily work at 6.3 volt but the problem is we only have 6.3 volt ac and after rectification that only gives us maximum maybe something like 8 volt dc and at one amp the dropout voltage on an lm317 is something like two volts so that means we would never be able to do more than five and a half maybe six volts in best conditions so that's just not going to work so we're going to need some kind of low dropout regulator circuit so i thought well no problem i'll just design my own little low dropout regulator uh, with components i already have and this is kind of the circuit i came up with so we have a bridge rectifier over here this is the input from our transformer bridge rectifier have some smoothing capacitors here and then we have two transistors kind of in the darlington configuration uh, but slightly different because i added a voltage pump here just to up the voltage a little bit for the collector of the first resistor and then it will drive the base of the second resistor and give us a voltage output here and then use a Zener diode here to give a reference voltage so we get the correct output voltage here so this circuit should work and it should only give us a dropout of about half a volt at one amp load but we're looking at it uh, it gets quite complex there's quite a lot of components involved here so it's kind of going down a rabbit hole i don't think there's a need to get this complicated 
So I went looking for a low dropout regulator and this one from Microchip seems to fit the task very well. The one I went with is the 29302. Uh, it's adjustable and will do up to 3 amps. See some of the specs here. So this is the configuration, so it's still in a TU220 package but with 5 pins. And if we scroll down here a bit, you can see here this is typical configuration. The 152 and the 302 is the same configuration here. Have input, capacitor and input, have an enable input, and then we just have a voltage divider here for the adjust to adjust the output voltage. And as I say here, so there's a minimum load for guaranteed stable operation. So for the 29302 that's 7 milliamps so just adjust these resistors here to make sure we always have a load of 7 milliamps and if we go down further here have a look at the specs so we can see here at one and a half amp load uh, the typical dropout voltage is 250 milliamps so that sounds pretty good so this is the circuit I came up with using this regulator. So first over here we have a bridge rectifier. I'm using shot key diodes here for minimal voltage drop across the diodes. Then we have two fairly large capacitors here, 4700 microfarad, two of them in parallel. Uh, it's just to get rid of as much ripple as possible. So we have as much uh, voltage to work with, even if the mains voltage is dropping or something, we will still have enough voltage to make sure there's no ripple on the output. And then we have our divider here for the adjust and making sure these are small enough values that we always have a minimum load here. Even though if we have tubes on the output here, it will never be a problem because they're always going to draw at least one amp. But I think it's generally a good idea to design it so it will work even if it's disconnected or if you take the tubes out it will still be within specs for the regulator here. So besides the configuration and the data sheet I've added a few components here that is uh, give me a little bit of a soft start. The problem with uh, tube heaters is that when they're cold they will draw a lot more current so to kind of soft start them a little bit so we get kind of a constant current draw, we don't get this kind of surge current. Uh, I've added this transistor here that will clamp the upper resistor here and then it will just slowly release the clamp as this um, capacitor here is charging up. So it's just going to charge up slowly and then release the clamp here and then the voltage will go up. So it will start as a low voltage and then it will slowly rise and then once the tubes are warmed up or after a certain period of time it'll reach the 6.3 volt output here and it'll just stay stable. And here we have the circuit board. So we have our rectifier diodes down here, our two large capacitors, our low drop-up regulator, a couple other capacitors, the transistor to do the soft start. And I hooked it up to my bench power supply here first and then hooked it up to the heater supply on our amplifier module over here and at the same time I hooked up a scope so we can see what's going on if the soft start is working as intended. So I'm going to switch on the power supply now. There we go. And we can see on the scope it's rising nicely. Yeah this looks not too bad. That is pretty good. Switch it off again. Ah, so we can see it gives us rise time of what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six seconds, something like that. Ah, I think that's pretty good. So that will take the edge off the heater current surge and should be a little bit gentler on everything. Now we know the heat regulator is working and performing correctly. Let's move on to the high voltage regulator. So, first, let's have a look at the schematic. We have our input over here, our AC input. And we have our rectifier diode here and a smoothing capacitor, filter capacitor. So this is only 100 microfarad because we don't really need a huge capacitor here because we don't care if there's like 20 volt ripple. We got enough voltage to work with to remove the ripple. Then we have a 330k resistor here. So this is basically just to bleed off this capacitor here and also it will bleed off this capacitor over here. 
just when we switch off the power, it's going to discharge these capacitor much faster. Just a safety feature thing. Then we have a high voltage transistor over here to do the regulation. And it's being fed by Xenon diodes in series. So this string of Xenon diodes, I'm planning on using 3 times 75 volt diodes and 156 volt diode. So that should give us about 280 volt, 81 volt, 281 volts, and a little bit of drop here. Uh, so 275, 280 volts, something on the output here. And over here, capacitor and a resistor. Uh, this is just to smooth out the voltage a little bit because we will have a lot of ripple here. So this will remove some of the ripple and again, this resistor here and this capacitor over here will make sure we have as little ripple as possible here because this any ripple we have here will be copied out to the output so this we want to be very low noise and free from ripple and on the output here we have another bleeding resistor and a capacitor here on the output and that's it it's very simple so um, this resistor and this capacitor here, besides smoothing out the voltage, it will also give us a soft start. So actually it will give us quite a soft start. So really, I would like this voltage to rise quite slowly, maybe over 20, 30 seconds before it reaches the full output voltage. So let's try run a test on it and see how it works. Okay, so I've hooked up some high voltage here, about 350 volt on the input, and I hooked up I uh, put on a small load resistor on the output here and I hook up my multimeter. So let's switch it on and see what happens. So and I'm switching on the high voltage now. And we can see the voltage is rising here. It's taking some time. That's okay. I want it to take about maybe 20, 30 seconds to reach full voltage. That looks about right. So let's see where it ends up. It should be somewhere around 275, 280 volts. Yeah, looks like we're getting there. Yeah, 275.8. So I think this regulator circuit works well. And I put like a decent size heatsink on here because we will be drawing like maybe 80. 80 milliamps here and we will probably have a voltage drop of somewhere around 50 50 plus volts uh, across the transistor here so we will be dissipating something like four or five watt so i think that's a that's a reasonable size heat sink for that and in addition to these soft starts i will probably be using an ntc for mister on the primary side of the transformer just to make sure we absolutely have no current surges so I think that's going to work quite well. Anyway, I think that's how far I want to go in this episode here. So I think next time we will start putting the whole thing together and hopefully have a working headphone amplifier very soon. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, give a thumbs up if you did and subscribe for more content. Leave a comment with suggestions and questions and just comment in general. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.